In this video, I will outline the current state of regional transit in southern Ontario with this useful chart. I'll start off by describing how to interpret it and the services it represents, and end the video with a list of upcoming projects expected by next year. I created this map to summarize the existing infrastructure and to help identify gaps, as it will be interesting to see how it changes over time. Solid lines represent passenger rail and dashed lines bus routes. The color corresponds to frequency and was inspired by this regional rail map of Toronto. Each circle on this view is a VIA Rail station, the national provider, and are also color-coded by service frequency. VIA Rail requires advanced booking, does not allow bicycles, and is typically delayed on less frequent routes. Removing these stations gives you a better look at the underlying bus network. There is no national bus provider, and bus routes are only shown outside of population centers when their frequency is greater than parallel rail. Frequencies are measured on weekdays, using the longest headway from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Some of the highlights from this view are the relatively high train frequency from Toronto to Brockville and that the only daily service to Northern Ontario is by bus, operated by Ontario Northland. These routes are also pre-booked but do allow bicycles for a fee. The last thing I will show from this view are the population centres of Southern Ontario and Western Quebec. These were determined in the 2021 census and reflect all communities greater than 1,000. Southern Ontario is only 3% smaller than England by surface area, with a population of 13 million. This gives it a similar density to France, and, in my opinion, a similar case for rapid regional transit. This view highlights the Greater Toronto Regional Rail Network, called GO. There is significant overlap with Via Rail, along with an airport express train called UP. Station outlines have been color-coded by service providers. GO also operates many regional bus routes with blue-level service to St. Catharines, Brantford, Kitchener, Guelph, Barrie, and Peterborough. GO trains and buses allow bikes, while UP Express does not. Neither service requires advanced booking. Also in this view are Toronto and Kitchener's urban rail lines. Toronto streetcars are not considered rail in this chart as they share roads with cars. Other than municipal transit, this map shows the Flix bus route from Kitchener to Guelph as the most frequent bus connection, and the Papa Ride car sharing route from London to Toronto. Here is the same view without station names. And here is a zoomed in view of the higher frequency GO network, also with station names. Here you can see that Ottawa is the only other population centre with urban rail, and that the most frequent connection to Montreal is also private car sharing through Papa Ride. All other regional bus services in Ontario are offered by these agencies. And of these agencies, here are the ones that allow bikes on board. The red outlines indicate further restrictions, such as not during peak hours, requiring a fee with packing, and needing to take it inside the bus only if space allows. Of these agencies, I wanted to highlight some areas with relatively good regional bus service. In the Niagara region, you can see that most of the eastern population centres are connected by blue level frequency, which indicates at least six trips daily. Similarly, in Simcoe County, the majority of population centres are connected by medium frequency buses and the south shore of Lake Simcoe by buses running more than once per hour. And lastly, Durham Region and two towns in Northumberland are also served by relatively frequent regional buses. In contrast, we have the only medium-sized population centre in southwest Ontario, St. Thomas, that is not served by regional transit at all. The 2021 census defined medium as more than 30,000 and large as more than 100,000 people. Ironically, St. Thomas is known as the railway city and was even identified as a priority for regional bus service prior to the COVID pandemic. However, this never came to pass, likely due to decreased transit demand and stay-at-home orders. Now that public opinion on COVID has shifted, there is some good news for transit on the horizon. Shifting back to eastern Ontario, we will be seeing an additional daily via rail service from Ottawa to Montreal. This will bring the daily number of trips back up to five, leaving the route at the same purple service level but returning to the pre-pandemic frequency as of June 9th. Similarly, we might expect to see a returned via service from Toronto to New York, with via rail stopping again at West Harbour, Grimsby, St. Catharines, and Niagara Falls. This is according to an Amtrak statement from this spring, who is the owner and majority operator of the line. However, this may be delayed until Grimsby Station has finished construction for GO train service, which was expected to be done this year as of December 2020. The next major development is a new urban rail line in Toronto called the Eglinton Crosstown. It will run between the two red arrows and is expected along with two new GO and one UP Express station, shown here in red circles. 
There is no exact opening date yet, but speculation puts it at the beginning of 2023. Also in Toronto will be another urban rail line called Finch West. This will serve the northwest of the city, but is not expected to connect to any regional rail lines. The opening date for this project is sometime in 2023. However, it is not all good news for transit, as 2023 brings the closure of Line 4 of the Toronto Metro, shown in orange, which is expected to be replaced with a Line 2 extension in the distant future. Moving away from Toronto, we will also get a reopening of the Trillium Urban Rail Line in Ottawa, with a significant extension of service outside of the urban core. It will include a new airport rail connection and opens in August of 2023. Much less exciting, but equally important, are two new regional bus services to Amherstburg in the southwest and Northumberland in central Ontario. There is no fixed date for Amherstburg, a currently unserved population centre, and as for Northumberland, it remains to be seen what on-demand bus service looks like, but this will be just around the corner in July. It's possible that there will be no fixed route at all, and as a result, it will not end up on the map. Anyway, I hope you found this map and video interesting, and please let me know if you liked it and would like to see more.